Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal here. So on sensitive women's issues or sensitive gender issues, can't get much more sensitive than today's topic. We're talking about transgenderism, and because it's become such a huge political issue out there, we need to talk about this. And there's a supporting film that's just made in Tonga that has all these issues unraveled, and we really need to kind of um, engage in this conversation to talk about how we can understand more and be a little more respectful and figure out how we can do things to uh, support their um, campaign. And, and just to understand people as people. So on that note, I'm going to introduce two people, guests, who are part of the production of Ladies in Waitings, which is a film in Tonga. Now, let me introduce my two guests. My first one is the co-producer and co-director uh, of Ladies in Waiting, Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson, welcome. Thank you very much, Crystal. It's great to be here. Thank you, Joe. Tell us a quick something about yourself that we need to know. Well, I'm from small town America for Where's a long that? time in uh, northwestern Pennsylvania, a small okay. town called Oil City, Pennsylvania. Oil City, no Oil kidding. Oil City, okay. yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. yeah. And I got into filmmaking um, just by chance. So um, I was living and working in Washington, D.C. for 20 years, focusing on human rights, advocacy, and grant making, et cetera, when an issue of bullying arose in the small town that I come from. And my partner, Dean Hamer, and I um, were drawn into that story and decided to, the best way that we could help is to help tell that story so people could come to understand this on a personal level and think about how we work for change in the mm. context of small town America. Yeah. I mean, it's, as much as it's small town, I think our other guest who he here I'm going to introduce soon is, you know, bullying is not a foreign subject, I'm sure, growing up in Tonga, uh, a very, I would say, masculine um, place, uh, if you beg to differ, I would love to hear. Um, let's introduce the star of Ladies in Waiting, who is an advocate, um, actually, the, the uh, co-founder of the Pacific, what is it called? Sorry, Pacific Sexual, gender sexual diversity. and Gender Diversity, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, Joel, Jolene Matael, welcome. Thank you very much, Crystal, and uh, thank you for having us. Thank here. you. Um, I mentioned bullying. Actually, Joe mentioned bullying. Do you want to start from there and talk about um, your position and your experience growing up in Tonga as a transgendered? Well, um, bullying in Tonga uh, was something that was never mentioned, you know. And as you grow up, um, they thought in, the, in in the culture that I grew up in. I think they thought that bullying was just something that is used to teach your children <laughs> how to behave, you know, and, um, and sometimes they don't realize that it actually ruins someone's life, you know. Yeah. Um, maybe you can teach and, 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 and um, teach your, your children to, to behave properly, you know, like my grandmother would always teach me how to sit on the table, how to eat properly, how to talk when you're supposed to be talking and all those things, you know, typical English way of doing things. But, um, <clears throat> but when you go out, out of your comfort zone from your from home to school and your other relatives, and because of your gender, that's when the other mm. bullying, you know, that nobody noticed. Mm. They all think that it's a good thing, like when my brother um, they had to, uh, had to um, force me to speak in a man's voice and act like a man and all that. Mm. That was the bullying that hurts mm. me personally. From people, you from know. loved ones. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. And they didn't realize that, that it was actually right. ruining my life at the same time. Mm. What age do you think that um, your family, of, I don't want to say officially, but when did they really kind of acknowledge that you are your identity is what you are, and how they had to kind of approach it from a different way and accept you for who you are? I think um, it came in a later year, but uh, when I grew up, I'll, my, I was the way I am. Because on my first birthday, I had a Ken Ken dress and, you know, corsage, and, and you loved my it. hair was in ringlets and all that, you know. And, um, and everybody knew that there was something different about me. 
you know, even my grandmother who raised me. Mm. But until I, I grew up a bit older, when I, when I started wearing a dress, you know, um, when I was 14 years old to, to church, that's when everything started banging. That's quite the, bold of you, yeah, at 14 to do that. Especially to a um, Catholic church. Ah. <laughs> I so, was more or less the star of the day. <laughs> I'm sure, in so many ways. I mean, how did the priest react? Or right. it's a small town, right? I mean, relatively well, small community. Well, he couldn't community. do anything. He had to continue with preaching, um, you know. But the, that was the actual talk of the town that day. Um, right. But my, I was taking my grandmother to where she always sits at, at the church, huh. and then I, and I just sit next to her, and nobody said anything, mm. you know. But uh, but, but of course, behind. after a bit, yeah. you know, yeah. we're like. That's, that's the problem all over the world. Now, uh, to take it on to a bigger cultural context, do you think these issues are uh, similar in different places? I mean, what are the similarities and why your film actually is applicable to a lot of other places who are experiencing the same kind of issues? I, I think so. I mean, just briefly, what the film is about yes. is um, what it is like to be transgender or any kind of gender or sexual minority uh, in a... In a community yeah. anywhere really but through Jolene's experience who was the you know based on her pioneering efforts to raise visibility just based on who she is mm. um, she was one of the co-founders of the Tonga Leites Association which is a community group that came together to provide support to young people who are being kicked out of their homes bullied and abused by family and other right. people in society so the film really follows a year in the life of Jolene and several other Leites in the community there just to show what it's like and Ultimately, something really important happened during the year that we were filming that it took their advocacy work to a whole nother level. What happened? Well, it started in 1992, but the thought of starting the, the, uh, the association started from 1987 when our first AIDS person came to Tonga, was brought by the family to die in Tonga. Oh. And then after that, just because that person was uh, uh, a gay or trans person, then they started calling us names. Instead of calling our, our proper names, um, they started calling us AIDS. You know, you walk down the road and everybody would just turn around and say, hey, AIDS, hey, or in, hey, AIDS. You know? <laughs> and that's how everything started. So mm. we had to, add, when we formed the, the association, it was to not only just to challenge the people, to, but to actually taught and, um, the HIV awareness to right. all our community, our trans, our LGBT community, and of course to educate the people that it, we are not the cause of, of the, uh, di this disease. Mm -hmm. And for the, mm -hmm. you know, we had to fight for the rights of our, our trans community that sure. were at yeah. the forefront of doing the work. So something in you kind of just motivated you to have to do something about this. Yes. Yeah. I was always a fighter, mm -hmm. even though I had the abuse and the you know the stigma and discrimination when I was a kid, you know. But I was always I was always standing up to fight, mm -hmm. fight back. Mm -hmm. You know, I was not much of a swearing person. You know, someone would tell them I'd say the f word and all those things back. You know, someone would say, I don't do that. I fight. Mm -hmm. okay. I get up and fight. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, I. I, and I'm talking about fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. I thought you were going to say I'll fight with my words. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't waste time talking with words. <laughs> and all okay, get over here. <laughs> but this is really a common story that, um, you know, communities everywhere that are under attack, LGBT yeah. communities in particular yes. in the U.S., Tonga, wherever, have had to rally together to mm -hmm. protect themselves, to advocate for themselves, to provide services in cases when, you know, in the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s when HIV and AIDS was ravaging our yes. communities, hospitals, healthcare providers weren't, weren't treating us, mm -hmm. et cetera. So the Tonga Ladies Association is a great example of how do we rally to support, right. protect our own community. And then, as Jolene mm -hmm. was talking about, eventually, how are we going to advocate for ourselves? Because we need to address right. you know, protections, mm -hmm. rights, access to education, yeah. all of these things that everybody else takes for granted. It seems like you're on a very strong path because you got the support from the, the royalty, right? Can you want to talk a little bit about the how you even your first premiere was for? 
the royal family? So Jolene is probably too modest and humble to yeah, say. Yeah, please, that, um, Sharon. <laughs> so she, one of the reasons she's such an important pioneer in this work in Tonga is because she grew up in a pro relatively prominent family in Tonga. Her father was a parliamentarian. Mm. Her mother was a very um, loved and respected musician. Uh -huh. um, ah, and together, the singer in you and the political <laughs> activist in you was right. already So she grew there. up in quite an you know, amazing environment. Um, her family was um, friends with the royal family and close friends with Queen Salote, one of the most beloved you know, figures in We have Tonga. a photo, I believe, with you and the... Uh, tell uh, me who that is. That's the Princess Royal. Wow. Um, and uh, Princess Regent of, of Tonga. Her name is Princess Mary And names. this was at the premiere of yeah. your film? That was at the premiere of, of our film in Tonga. Okay, okay. At the International Tanoa Hotel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that's interesting. So you have the support of the royal family, obviously, because of your connections. But still, it's not something light to support an issue like this on behalf of the government. And yet, you have all this adversity with the, the, the religious movement within your culture. So how do you balance that? I mean, I'm sure you have your respect for the church, and yet you have the challenge of them going against who you are. Mm -hmm. Well, instead of, uh, you know, as I said, I was a fighter, but I was, a, you know, I changed my way of doing <laughs> fighting now. <Okay. laughs> so we, we, you know, as the year goes by, we, we, we intend to, to learn other things from just not not just mm -hmm. by talking on Facebook and all those things. We decided to change our method of doing things to, to bring in mm -hmm. our oppositions to sit down on the same table and start talking. And we, when, we, when we say start talking, mm -hmm. um, we use the methodology, the Talanoa methodology. And the Tala means telling, mm -hmm. and Noa means someone says death. Mm. would sit there and listen, mm. you know. So using the, method, the Talano methodology is like, um, it, it's a more peaceful way of mm. doing things, mm. you know, instead mm. of rallying, yes. writing yes. banners writing and poster, yeah. something old posters, all use days, and, nope. you know, yeah. and shouting and all that. And fist fights. <laughs> but this is really we, interesting. This is would you, would you call this a uh, a specific way of approaching? Yes. Because indigenous theory, you know, a lot of times they are advocating, you know, peace, advocating through peace and mm. healing processes, which for the Western kind of way of doing it is just kind of yeah. going out there and fighting, the streets, very yeah. binary. And mm. so is that because when I first met you at the HIF, uh, you said I, I want to do this for my people, and it was interesting that you wanted to focus on that first and mm. why that differentiates mm. from a, a different approach. It was um, it was more um, I think it was more peaceful way of doing, yeah. and not only yeah. that, but it gave us a, a, a peace uh, way of space you know at, mm. at, you know and at, at the same time at the end of the day yeah. you you don't get tired you don't get frustrated mm. out of you know after talking for to them in a consultation for 8 hours right throughout the day yeah. you know of course there'll be arguments but at the same time at the end of the day there's something mm. that's been solved mm. on the table right there and yeah. then you know yeah. and and not only that but even if you don't disagree, if you still disagree with, you know, both parties, parties will both disagree. But we shake hands mm. afterwards mm. and we say good greetings to you. That's you know, great. and it, it it's it, may, it makes you feel good, feel proud yeah. that you're able to bring your opposition I, to I face, love face to face. The idea of peace, and you know, with that note on peace, I would like to maybe take this opportunity to show the trailer because we've been talking it up, and it's like, okay. what is this about? Why don't we go and watch the trailer, and we'll come back and we'll continue. And I'd love to hear more Great. about Joe and sure. the filmmaking process of entering this world and how sure. you were included, or you know, mm -hmm. how this family all came to be. So let's watch the trailer of Ladies in Waiting. Tonga is the last remaining kingdom in the Pacific, and we're very proud of, of who we are. Ladies and 
gentlemen and other genders. Welcome to this galaxy 2016. Hey! Joey Batale is a man. Even if he changed the way he dresses, even if he changed the way he speaks. When he behold the word of God, they should be arrested because it's illegal here in Tonga. One of my eldest brothers put a rope on my neck and pull it to try and get me to speak in, in a man's voice. It got to the point that I almost took my life away. My brother told me how many years now you were joining the pageant, how many years now you joining together with the Tonga Ladies Association. You should change now. We're known as chefs, decorators, do the dirty errands, clean up the house, help the mothers. And they don't know that it's hurt, right? Because of the feeling like I'm a lady, I have to stand and tell the people who am I. I will never bend my life to anyone's policy. I will be somebody. <laughs> Wow, you have to see this film. Ladies and Waitings in Tonga, starring our guest today, Joey, and our co-producer and director, Joe Wilson, here. Uh, thank you again for joining us on Quok Talk. Now, we're talking about transgender and the challenges of it in a place like Tonga and how it's relevant to the world. Now, in the film, you approach so many sensitive issues, the concept of how religion has played its role in kind of suppressing and really making it an ugly issue. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and how that's come? Because indigenously, like traditionally, this gender issue wasn't even an issue, was it? No, I, well, Not it's often that... said that in the Pacific there has been a more welcoming and accepting, you know, cultural approach to yes. these issues. Mm. But as we see, you know, in more modern times now, um, there are many different forces that are at play. People who use LGBT people and other marginalized communities as political wedges. Mm -hmm. What has been happening in Tonga as elsewhere, and what happened during the year of our filming, was those who are using religion, evangelical fundamentalist yes. types, particularly televangelists, who use that platform to preach against certain people in the community. In Tonga, this televangelist, Pastor Barry Tokolo, is supported by the Trinity Broadcasting Network, which is an international televangelism conglomerate based in California. He was targeting and essentially harassing and, and bullying yeah, transgender right. people in Tonga on the air and creating a real air of, of um, terror, I would have to say. How did that work what, during the filming process? I mean, he knew your position on this issue. So why this was essential during the year we were filming is uh, Jolene and the Tonga Ladies Association for years had had an annual event called the Miss Galaxy pageant, yes. which is a big community event that raised money for their work and also served as a way to entertain the community, but also to advocate and educate people. Right. But during the year that we were filming, this uh, right-wing religious agitation was getting so extreme that Joey and her colleagues decided to cancel the annual Miss Galaxy pageant and hold a oh. national consultation on these issues. And it really, I think, changed the dynamic. And you covered that in the film? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Joe, I wanted to ask you as a filmmaker, um, going into a culture that's not your own and in a very close-knit community, how, how did that affect, I mean, how, how did you work together or how did the community uh, embrace <laughs> Joe and Dean? Do you want to share anything or you know, how do you get into, because this is yeah. a very personal, lots of yeah. issues, they have to trust you to be able to tell their stories. Yeah. Well, we were introduced to Jolene and her colleagues by a close mutual friend of ours, Kumuhina Lemwana Wankalu, oh, who we Kumuhina made a film about here in Hawaii. Here, yes. And I think it was initially that introduction which, mm. you know, created opportunities for us to get to know each other. And then, you know, for Dean and I, our style is we're just two people with cameras that try to 
you know, gain that kind of trust that allows the people who are inviting us into their lives and their homes to, mm. you know, to tell their stories to just allow us to be there and to capture their real lives in real time. And your Especially friends and family were ha comfortable doing that with the cameras in your faces? I think they were. Um, well, at first, but especially when we're dealing with, um, you know, the church leaders, right. you know, um, uh, one of them would say, oh, that we, I got them off guard, you know, they didn't, uh, they weren't sure what it was all about and all that. Um, but then um, it did really, but because of the relationship that I have with some of these mm. church leaders, it made mm. things a lot easier. Yeah, you know, um, and um, I had I just had to explain to them exactly what the uh, the document is all about. Mm. You know, a little bit of it, and then I leave the rest for for Joe and Dean to do the interview. Mm. Mm. Um, and I'm I was never there. I was never there during the, all those interviews right. with the church okay. leaders. Okay, it's really all based on your relationships with yeah. people. I mean, Joey is a one of the most highly respected people in Tonga, so that made it easier for us. Mm. And you know, we didn't even go to Tonga thinking we're going to make a film. We went to show Kumohina. Mm -hmm. But when we met Jolene, and I think when she got to know us a little bit, she mm -hmm. said, you know, it's actually been a long dream of mine to mm -hmm. um, tell our story so that we can advance our cause. I think if you had the funding and support, I think you should do a feature film on Jolene's story because she, at a meeting at the school, was talking about her life and how she stole the mic while she was uh, working at the custodian. <laughs> you have so many stories. I mean, it is movie material. I'm serious. Yeah. Um, you are just... Drama queen by nature, <laughs> I guess. Like and that's why you have the power. Person. Right. But yeah. you need that to be yeah. able to be an activist in a way. You need to have the power to uh, attract attention to proceed True. with this campaign. Yeah. So yeah. with this campaign, what type of impact do you both hope to attain with this film? Yeah. You go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. Um, well, we... We have already started this petition that uh, it's online and it's on our website um, that everybody can go in and... and um, yeah. Yes. yeah. With this mm -hmm. map, what does yeah. that mean? You want to tell us a little bit about that? Those are the seven countries that still criminalize uh, um, homosexuality. In the Asia-Pacific region? In some cross yes. When you say criminalize, and what is the extent of that? Um, if you're um, found or, you know, uh, to be acting in, or in a sexual, uh, social sexual activity in with public. Uh, in in public, or if anybody um, uh, report you to the mm. police uh -huh. that you molested a child or something like that, or uh, it, it doesn't really. The, the law doesn't really stand or, or doesn't really describe the actual activity. Okay. As for social mm. partner, you know, uh, um, activity, but it, it really it says it really directs on rape um, cases, you know. M many of these laws are actually holdover colonial era laws. Oh. There were anti sodomy laws, same sex okay. relations, and sometimes cross dressing. Yeah, huh. what, what well, I think, the cross dressing yeah. definitely yeah. is yeah. illegal yeah. in certain those countries. It can yeah. be, and you know, these have largely gone unenforced. But the mm. problem that's arising now, and what we witnessed when we were working with the community during mm. the year of filming, was these people now who have these strong religious, very conservative yes. religious voices, not the mainline churches in Tonga, that mm. have historically been quite welcoming and accepting. Um, these more radical churches are now using the existence of these old uh -huh. laws to say, see, these right. people don't belong here. Yeah, that's, but that's um, what I meant, yeah. you know, because you know, they're stigma. using that. Yeah. They're using yeah. that law yeah. to actually um, put us into jail, you know, put yeah. us to jail. and, and then. Uh, and, or and justification for discrimination and stigma yeah, and all yeah. kinds of things. And, yeah, and it's it's hardening because you yeah. know with all the comfort that you grew up in and all that, it's been raised in in, in parliament a few times. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and especially when AIDS came into the you know to the as a topic yeah. during parliament uh, yeah. uh, par parliament sorry. Um, someone turned just turned around and said, oh maybe we should send those people to. 
one of the islands called Makonai or Makonai or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and it's secluded to them. Right. They think that Exiles. by isolating you, you might change yeah. and co yeah. go back yeah. to what you're supposed to be. But the idea behind the campaign is like a film, as you know, it gives people like personal stories. Yes. You can see yes. people That's as human beings, as family, as relatives, as, as, humans. as yeah. people. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind the campaign, Jolene and her colleagues, are saying, let's use this film to go to islands across the Pacific, Pacific yeah. to bring people together, to see the stories, to feel the emotions, to challenge yeah. people's hearts and minds, mm. and then Talanoa together, as Jolene said. Right. You know, like, how are we going to work together to overcome peace. the stigma and the discrimination mm. and the threats that these laws yeah. pose to people's but lives? But that takes a lot of advocacy, a lot of outreach, and individual talks with small groups. I mean, Joey, you haven't, I don't know how much you mentioned about your personal life. I believe you said you have three children. The adopted children. I, you know, as a mother, how do you feel about um, educating the younger generation about the um, inclusivity and, and the importance of mm. understanding and respecting people for who they are? I think it, it will really start from home because yes. I, when when the kids, when I raised them, I never hid anything from them. You know, I never hid anything about the my, the work that I do, my personal life, yeah. and um, even. My com uh, condom campaign. I we I never hid that from. Them. They grew up in my house, seeing all the, the you know because our office was house. yeah. I mean, <laughs> especially when we do campaigns, we'll have um, dispensers of of condoms everywhere to be distributed wow. to all mm. the hotels, the bars, you That's know, great. and everything. And great. you know, if my my youngest one was the only one who would who actually asked me how. I mean. What is condom? What yeah. is it about? But that's you the know? thing. We need yeah. to ask questions. Yeah. So people have questions. We have a very limited time left. How can people ask questions of how to learn more about the film and advocacy? We would love it if people would go to the website, okay. ladiesinwaiting.com, and in particular to look at the petition that um, Jolene and a number of her colleague organizations have started uh -huh. to get support to challenge these laws and even more support to advocate for the protection and the promotion of yeah. basic human rights for LGBTI people. So schools, people. Uh, organizations, everybody can go and take this film and use it yes. as, a, as a form of discussion to further your campaign. Absolutely. Well, thank you That's so much, goal. and I'm so sorry yeah. that we don't have enough time. I would love to talk to you for. <laughs> hours and hours on end. But thank you so much for your thank time you, and good luck with the thank film you. and the movement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs>